Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to continue with the previous example with ASP.NET. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is that add some validation to this website, the basic page. Okay. In the previous example, we have two text fields, text name and then text age. I'm going to create a couple more. So I'm going to control copy, control V, and then control V. And this is going to be, if we go to the source, let's call that txt, uh, txt phone, and then txt email. All right. And all right. And then uh, that's it. That's it. We need to do the. Um, placeholder so if you look at the placeholder instead of age age we say phone enter phone I think this is phone txt phone yeah this is phone here okay and enter email here okay now I just hide this thing here we go back to the design now, validation can happen at different level. That is what we call server-side validation, is client-side validation. And in both, they're different in a way that the server-side, you send the request and the data to the server and it validates it and send it back to you, whether it's valid or not. There's a client-side validation where you do, you, uh, you validate your data mainly on your, uh, on your screen, and that is uh, uh, using mainly JavaScript, okay, and J jQuery, which is a library of JavaScript. So what are we doing here is we're going to use some of these nice tools that Microsoft offers for us, or uh, Visual Studio offers for us, and this is called validation. Now. HTML5 have basic validation, which is like whether this is required or not. So if we run it, remember, if you don't type anything here, it'll tell you this field is required, cannot be blank. So if I type anything, it'll go to the next one and checks, right? And then next one and checks, right? And so forth. Well, we want it to be a little bit more than that. We want it to say, this is cannot be blank, that's fine. You can use this control or you can use HTML5. Now, how do you use these controls? The validator control is, validate, is uh, uh, they're under validation. Okay, so if it's, let me just do this here so you can see it, okay. They're under validation, so you have a tab called validation and you have many of them. One of them compare validator custom validator, range validator, and uh, expression, regular expression validator, required field validator, and validation, validation summary. I'll explain most of these if we have time. We'll start with the first one, the required validator. This is very similar to this HTML, if you look at this, so very similar to this, required. You have a tag called required, you have an attribute called required, so that's the same. Now you can do that, or you can use the HTML. So how, let me just, just show you how to do it here, or you have, so you can choose which way you want to use it, okay? So we go here to the design, and then we drag this next to it. Now ideally you will have a table, maybe we'll do that. We'll just add a table and then put the messages next to it so it looks better. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly insert a table HTML table, we have an HTML tag, right? Uh, HTML tags here. And then I'm gonna include uh, a table just here. And I'll, so this table has three rows and two columns. So I'm gonna delete this column. Okay. Delete column. Okay, so I have two columns. You can make them smaller if you want. Um, you can 
to do that. There you go. And then I will put these control X, and then I'll put it here, control V, and this control X, and control V, and control X, and control V. And we need to do what? We need to insert one more thing here. Oh, and this is okay. We need to insert a new more uh, new row. Insert uh, row below. Control Z here. We'll insert here. Insert row below. All right, and then I'll put the last one here. Control X and then control V here. A little bit better organized, okay. All right. Okay, and now what I want to do is that I want to put these error messages in here. So I'm going to put this input validator again, required valid field validator, and put it next to this. And you can customize the error message. This is the name of it, just like any other object, the name of it is required field validator. And then you can, here's your error message. So this first thing you need to do, decide on what you want to say in your error message. So you can say, name cannot be blank. Okay, that's one. And then you can do the message display it's dynamic so it, it only appears when there is an error message okay and one more thing here you can do maybe the four count the color just to give it a different color uh, for color I'm going to select red for example just to make it stand out all right and uh, the last thing we need to do here is that you need to say this validator is tied to what control? So there is something called control to validate, and then you just select TXT name, all right? Now, if you run it, you're gonna get an error. If we do control, uh, if you're gonna run, and then if I click on this, but it worked, all right? Why did it work? And shouldn't, we should have gotten this. Let me run it again. Let me see that. Okay, see, so yeah, we got an error. All right. But there, this error is saying that validation and Java, you need to give access to validation in the web config. All right. So, how do you do this? I've already done that somewhere. I'm just copy it and paste it. So, you need this key in your web configuration file, basically allowing the jQuery and JavaScript to, to do the validation. Okay. So, what do you do is that you go in here and type this, basically, in the web config. And if you search on the net, you'll find it, okay? If you just type in the error, you'll find it. So we have a file called web config where it contains all the configuration of your website. And I'm going to include this line, the, the app settings here. So this now says, it allow me to validate, to use the validation in my website. So now if I run it on my server, so if I run it, it's okay. But if I check, I'm still getting two. So you need to decide if I want to keep this or keep this or not. So, because it's doing the same thing. Okay. And then, and then you click on that, it disappears. Okay. So what you can do, you go to that field. If you want to use a validator in the, uh, if you want to use a validator in the, uh, that is available in ASP.NET, you go in here, you select that field, and now you can select, you go to the source, and TXT name, you just take required out. If you want to use that, all right? So now, submit, you got, you got the error on the next one, but you got name cannot be blank, all right? If you fill it, it will disappear. So that's one. Okay, so what's next? We have other controls here that you can use. Uh, one we have called range validator. So if you want to say you want to enter an age between, for example, 15 and 25 or 15 and 65, whatever, right? It doesn't make sense, but let's just add this one here. 
range validator. And the range validator says, you have, we do the same things, same thing basically, which is the message, okay, their message, you need to say the date or age must be between uh, 15 and 65. Okay, no reason, <laughs> just I made it. Okay, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, that's just the error message. Again, you can do the color, foreground color, the red again. I hit OK. Did I see you use different color here? They use a different color. <laughs> so, all right, let's select the red. All right. And then, what else do you need to do? You need to select the valid control and then tell it what actually you want to validate, which is the control to validate, which is the XDH. Also, you need to say the, uh, you need to say the, the if display is dynamic, all right? So it only appears when you have an error, and it disappears if you don't have an error. And the last thing we want to do in here, you need to give your maximum value and minimum value, because you're giving a range here. So if you put here, I want to put 65, and I put 15 here, and then now if you run it, you'll notice if I don't type anything, if you don't type anything, you get that error. But if you type in 20, or if you type in 13, check age must be 50, between 15 and 16. If you type in 40, 44, check that error is gone. And then here you can type in one error. Okay. Then we need to worry about these phones and the uh, phone and the um, email. Okay, how do you do these things? Well, there is a nice feature with uh, Visual Studio, which is called regular expression validator. Regular expressions are used to check for patterns. So the nice thing about it, you don't need to know how to do it because it's done for you basically. So what do you do? You're gonna select this here, put it in here, and this is called, we're gonna call this, uh, we're checking the phone here, so you can change the name if you want, and, but this error message, enter a valid phone, okay? A valid phone number, number, okay? Again, the control, the display is dynamic. The control to validate is the XD phone. And here is we have to do one more thing. Okay. Validate validation expression. Do you see that? Here is where you see you can talk if you know how to do regular expression, and I tell you it's not easy. It's still hard for me. Or you can just simply click on this box and select. French phone number, German phone number, German postcode, internet email, internet URL, any of these, or US phone number. Okay, so if you say this, it'll give you how you, for, you know, like this is the, you have to put the area code, three digits, and then four digits. So it'll be like this. Okay, now if you run it, if you don't enter anything, well, we have to put something, 555, valid phone number. So what is a valid phone number? 555, 555, and let's say 54444. Four, four, four. Okay, is that a valid? Valid, see that? So that's okay. Uh, so this, all right, let's put something here. Okay, I'm gonna put something. So that is how you do your use regular expression. So how about email? Same way, it works in the same way. So what you do is just go and add, again, regular expression validator. Uh, regular expression, add it in here. And then you do uh, uh, same stuff that we did, valid expression to validate. There is one called uh, email. 
What is the email? Email, email address, internet. Internet email. Here you go. And then you hit OK. So it, it's looking for an ad and then uh, some text, a dot, and some text and a, uh, a dot to create a server. So what do you do now? Again, we need to say the, the message here, enter valid email. Valid email. And then here, you will need to say the control to validate. It's the XD email. And display is dynamic. And then that's it. Watch what happens. Pretty easy, really powerful. You don't have to write any code. Uh, if you type in ABC at one to um, ABC.com, then it should be okay. That one should be okay. If you don't do that, if we say here, if I just type in ABC, and then I do check, it will give me intel valid email. Okay. Of course, this is basic, and this is happening on the server side. Okay. All right. So that is some of these validators. There is a couple of them. One of them is the uh, um, what do you call uh, required? Uh, um, sorry. The, Compare validator. So what does that mean? What does that do for you? This is will have to you will have to put two controls You put the message here, and then you will have to put two control compare you would comparing uh, The one that to validate and what you comparing it to All right, so you will have here for example if you want to if you have password confirm and retype it again, so you'll have the first one is the first password, the second one would be the confirmed password, okay? Or you can do that, you can just say you want to compare to a particular value. So in here you can say um, uh, value to compare. So you would compare whatever they enter to a particular value, all right? And not only that, you have, when you're comparing, you can say how, what, is, what is the operation to compare or how are we going to compare the two? which is you have like equal, not equal, greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal. So this is really, really, really a powerful tool to, to use, okay? And you don't have to write a single line of code, all right? One more last, one more uh, validator, which is a custom validator, and that is a little bit different. Sometimes you want to make your own validation, for example, if you want to make, you want to check a, a particular number matches a certain pattern, an even number, odd number, or, uh, you know, a, a certain length, whatever, right? So you can have your own custom validator. In addition, what you have to provide here, you will have to provide uh, the function to call, the client that to call. So you will have a Java, JavaScript or a C sharp code that embedded in the client, and then you will call that in here, all right? There is a documentation on this. If you go to, I think there's ASP.net here, this link, it's by, uh, by MSDN, and then it'll tell you about all of these if you want to, okay, and including that custom one, all right? And the last thing is the summary. Validation. What is a summary validation? So if I put that in here, basically instead of listing them in here, they will look. They will be listed all underneath each other. So if you run it, and if I don't type anything, you see that name cannot be blank. If I type in, if I have an error here, if I have an error here, if I have an error here, and then you do this, you'll see that it will list all the errors here. All right. All right, that is, uh, I think this is, should be 12, so show all the errors, okay. That is it for custom validation, all right, and uh, using the validation controls available in uh, Visual Studio. All right, and I will see you on the next video. All right, have a good day.